last lesson, we went over how to open up classes and took really a base case approach to how metaprogramming works. In this one, I want to dive a little bit more into a, kind of a more practical way that you would do it. So I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to call it metaprogramming example two. And let's open this up. Okay, so I'm going to, in this case, open up the string class. The string class is a class in Ruby that everything has access to, and it gives you the, uh, when I say everything, I mean all strings obviously have access to. So when you create a string object, uh, then what you're doing is you're creating an object that is coming from the, uh, or you're instantiating the string class, essentially. So I'm going to create this object here called, um, or I'm going to redeclare the string class. When I'm doing this, uh, keep in mind, I'm not uh, creating class string from scratch. Because this is a Ruby program, you already have access to the string class. Uh, you can test this out by opening up an IRB session right here. And I'll just say testing and then type class. And you can see that it tells you this is of type string. So I don't have to create a class. This isn't going to be from scratch. When I'm doing this, I'm opening it up the same way in the last episode we opened up the baseball class. Uh, this is doing it, but it's doing it for a second time because it was created and it's in the core Ruby library. So uh, class string, and I want to add a method called sensor here. So I'm going to say def sensor. Not that I'm saying it's ever good to sensor or bad, but I just want to show you how you can use it. So let's say that you have a program and you need to block out certain words. So there are certain words in your program that you do not want showing up. So what I'm doing here, there's no method for the string class uh, in Ruby, uh, especially um, you know, something like sensor. Uh, but with this, what I can do is I can add this dynamically. So later on in the program, I can simply call sensor on any string. I don't have to you know, create a different class and then put sensor a sensor method inside of it and then instantiate that class and then pass in a string as an argument. Because I'm adding it directly to the string class itself, now every string in the rest of the program will have access to this sensor method. So let's add some code in here. I'm gonna say self, which means that when it, this is gonna be only on whatever object it's working on. So if we do something like testing right here, by doing this, we're instantiating the a string right here. So this is a string object. And so what self here is referencing testing. It's referencing whatever, uh, whatever object that it's working on or it's being called on. Self can be a little bit confusing, but uh, really once you get used to it, just know it's referencing whatever it is that the method is being called on. So I'm going to say self, and I'm going to use a gsub method, and I'm going to change whatever is being called on. So that's why I'm doing gsub bang. And now I want to do a little string interpolation, and I'm gonna pass in the argument for bad word. And then I'm going to pass in, if you remember to uh, G, the G sub method, it takes multiple arguments. Uh, it, the first one is the string that it's working on. The second is whatever you want it to be replaced with. So this is just substituting. So we're going to essentially say that grab this string and change it so whatever bad word gets passed in here gets replaced with censored. So let's try this down here. I'm going to print out the bunny was in trouble with the king's bunny doesn't have to make sense. I just want to show you something and have bunny placed in it twice. So now 
This is a string. So because we did some metaprogramming and we added this sensor method to string, now we can actually call the sensor method and it takes in an argument and the argument's a string and it takes in whatever we're wanting to be replaced. So if I say bunny here, let's switch back the terminal and say Ruby metaprogramming two and you can see that it prints out the censored was in trouble with the king's censored. So this is pretty cool. With just a few lines of code, we're actually able to open up the entire string class for Ruby and customize it. So now we have this new method and we could call this from anywhere. So this is a great way of being really efficient with the code. Uh, this is using dry principles. Remember, do not repeat yourself. And gives us the ability to add a lot of functionality in actually just a very, very little amount of code. So let's, because we have this open, let's uh, give it another method. So we'll say number of characters, because that's something that sometimes you'd want on a string. And this is a little bit uh, contrived because you actually already have the ability to do this. But say that we wanted to have a method called num of characters. So here, let's copy this string. I'll leave this in here uh, for the show notes so you can see it. And now I can do num of cars and print that out. Come back here and run it. And you can see that we have 45 characters inside of this string, but we're able to call our new custom method inside of the string. So this is a way, these are a couple of examples, a couple of practical examples on how you can work with Ruby programs, create custom functionality, and really how easy metaprogramming is at its core.